Yes, indeed. For those who don't know, I have a particular hate for the cartoon series Doug. Not because the show itself is an ungodly, boring waste of time, though that certainly doesn't help, but more that anyone growing up with the name Doug was constantly tortured by the fact that this show was about a wimpy, unpopular dork doofus who coincidentally shared the same name. Just hearing the theme music alone seems to be causing an impressive tumor in my brain that I have decided to name Porkchop. I look forward to when it finally finishes me off and I never have to listen to that song again. But I digress. Once Disney took over and started running the show on ABC as opposed to Nickelodeon, fans were outraged because, you know, the original was such a classic. So once Disney asked the loyal fans if they would like to see a motion picture based on the astounding epic hero, people all over the world proudly replied, eh? And the movie was made. And we're here to look at it today. Why? Because you hate me, people. By popular demand, let's take a look at Doug's first movie. First of all, I have to point out that this title is pretty pompous, as if to indicate that there's no doubt that our film is going to be so popular that, of course, it's going to warrant a sequel. But unlike Pokemon the first movie, where they knew the sequels were already made, this one was just on its own. And, wouldn't you know it, the film didn't make enough money to milk any sequels. And that must be bad because this is Disney, the sequel generating monsters! They take classic fairy tales and say, hey, what did ever happen after Happily Ever After? Well, you can find out in Cinderella 4, filing royal taxes. But, I digress. The film opens in the 90s, but for some reason people act like it's the 50s, as being told by the 70s, as we see school bully Roger, not voiced by Billy West, <laughs> buy your torches and pitchforks here, who's preparing to pull off another prank on Doug and his friend Skeeter. Uh, don't you think this is kind of mean? It's unhealthy for me to bottle up my natural childlike spontaneity. I guess they're really hoping they're afraid of paper mache Chinese dragons. Very funny, you guys. Hardy har. Well, you had your fun. Now you can go home. <gasps> Roger? <laughs> 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 There's no gore, but there is something just as equally terrifying. The opening credits. Roll it, pork chop. Here comes the opening theme. You mean, they changed the opening theme? That's me, pork chop. Hallelujah! Oh, it's bland. It's forgettable. It sounds like nothing I would ever remember in recent history. But hey, so's the show! It's absolutely perfect! Rest in hell, you theme! May an army of devils sing thee to thy fiery death! After we just... assume Skeeter got away from the monster, Doug informs us of the one thing that's on everybody's mind. That means at school, people have just one thing on their minds. Uh, isn't it romantic? A Valentine's dance. How delightful. A Valentine's dance? A Valentine's dance? dance? Who the f talks about a dance this much? I mean, the girls I can understand, but the boys? Really? Somehow this doesn't seem particularly realistic. Hey, Bobby, good job on that last shot. Oh, you know, it's these new Air Jordans. Ah, uh, those don't do anything. Yes, they do. They can make you reach the net easier. Oh, Bobby, you've been watching too many commercials. Hey, seriously? Is nobody thinking about the dance? So Doug decides he wants to ask out the sweetheart he's always too nervous to approach, the girl next door with jaundice, Patty Mayonnaise. I knew I had to find a way to make this dance really perfect. The student council's supposed to pick two people to coordinate the dance, but nobody signed up! Whoever we get is gonna have to work day and night to get ready. Day and night? Right, pay close attention, Miss Mayonnaise. Um, hi! Totally pointless fantasy sequence. We hit him right in the middle with a big, heart-shaped mirror ball! Bang! Oh, Doug, you're so dance-splattery. Uh, I can understand having a fantasy dreaming about working with her, but why is a World War II general? I mean, it's just so random. Don't fantasies have to have some sort of logical reasoning behind them? Hmm, one of these days, I like to do a crossover with Nash. <laughs> are weird. 
Not much competition. So both Doug and Patty sign on for the dance committee, but only Patty gets chosen. The other position goes to a guy named Guy. Guy Graham, upperclassman, heads up, dinky dance, bang! <laughs> it turns out Guy joined the committee to get fresh with Patty too. Well, Doug, you understand, Guy has real accomplishments, and he's friends with my daddy. Fine, young man. But for the moment, even bigger news seems to have fallen into their lap. The monster. <gasps> So after they dissolve to one second later, Doug gets excited about the possibilities a picture of a foot can bring. Skeeter, we're gonna be famous! This is the biggest thing ever! Woohoo! When the biggest thing ever happens. The biggest thing ever. Doug imagines himself a superhero. What is the script narrating now? What's going on? That night, Quailman rendezvous with a certain young woman. Oh, Quail Man. What is the point of these fantasies? Yes, he plays the character on the show. But what does that have to do with what's going on right now? Looks like an uninvited guest is trying to crash the party, Quail Dog. It's like if Scrubs and Family Guy took all their pointless cutaway jokes and turned into some sort of horrible hybrid of wasted time. Quail Man and his super pal, Quail Dog. And not only that, this fantasy goes on for a while. Almost as if we went into a totally different movie. If only I was so lucky. Who are you? I am the Lord of the Polka. Care to dance? Must dance. I'm not kidding. This fantasy goes on for like four minutes, which in Disney animated years is like 20. Whale Dog turns the high-powered disco lights into the eyes of the monster, momentarily disorienting the reptilian rowdy. I don't even get it. Does Doug just black out for a while while his friends just look at him awkwardly? So, Doug, what do you think about the picture? Doug, I miss you when you do this. Why do you go where I can't follow? Meanwhile, Roger and his henchmen, because all school bullies have henchmen in cartoons, put together a plan to find the monster they discover the other night. There is only one thing that can save us from certain destruction. I present to you... Robo-Crusher! Elvis! <laughs> Note the pincer claws and x-ray eyes. I've drawn myself down here for scale. Money is no object! Okay, so all reality connecting to what children do in high school has totally been removed. But I guess that's what I'd expect in a world where everybody looks like a Dr. Seuss mutant. But little do they know that the monster from the other night followed them home! So they take the paranormal activity approach in that they never call the cops and try to fight off the scariness themselves. <laughs> but they find out that the monster isn't scary at all. I dare even call him a complete letdown. Can't believe that he tried to eat Herman Melville. Hey, he looked. He thinks it's his name. You you like that name? Herman Melville? Ooh. Okay, monster. Ooh. From now on, your name is Herman Melville. <laughs> Ooh, I feel disgraced somehow. So they go to their friend Mr. Dink to tell him all about the monster. And to be fair, he does manage to deliver the only funny scene in the movie. Virtual reality! <laughs> it's like we're standing right in your living room! Exactly! Everything's right where it is in real life! It's exactly like being here! Only much more expensive. Sort of like watching Doug on the big screen when you could be watching it at home for free! Mr. Dink, meet Herman Melville, the monster of Lucky Duck Lake! So they let the mayor know about their discovery and... I guess because she's in politics, her first reaction is to cover it up. You mean to tell me that he came out of that polluted lake? Bud, hang up. Dear? Now, if we call the newspaper, owned by Bluffco, and tell them we've got a story that Bill Bluff is a polluter, someone will kill the story. And let's just say it won't be good for Herman either. Being the mayor, it's not like I have any possible power to fix this problem at all, so I guess we're stuck. Get a clue! Get a clue, you moron! Get a clue! But she does decide to hold a press conference the next day to show the monster on her terms. So Doug tells Patty about what's going on, right in front of Guy, who's good friends with Mr. Bluff! 
We have proof Mr. Bluff's polluting the lake. I wouldn't go around saying stuff you can't prove. Well, I've got proof. How dumb are you? In fact, if you look up dumb in the dictionary, you'll find a picture of... What should be you in there? You'll see tomorrow. It's going to be big, 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 big news. But when the day of the big news conference arrives, Doug thinks there's something suspicious about all the reporters. Gee, what could have given him that idea? Maybe because they're all dressed like Robert Stack? Thank you, Mayor Tippy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, always wanted to do that on TV. <clears throat> You're a waste of thought. So, to save the monster, Doug totally bails on the news conference. Something's not right. Huh? I think we made a big mistake. Mr. Oh, Funny, is this your idea of a joke? I'm sorry, I gotta go now. I knew it. Sea monsters, right. I can't believe it. I, I had no idea Doug would lie like that. I say we judge strictly by how it looks and in no way question motivation or character. So after they find out that the reporters did indeed work for Mr. Bluff, and that it was just a plan to capture the monster, the mayor's plan is going to be A. Have Bluff arrested B. Document all that she can through video and eyewitnesses that the monster is real Or C. Have some of Bud's famous leftover meatloaf Now, what do you say we have some of Bud's famous leftover meatloaf? Ooh, now you're talking, <laughs> let's go away <laughs> Am I on Mars? Tell me I'm on Mars! None of this makes any sense! I must be on Mars! logical as Roger and his friends actually making that giant robot they were talking about. Hello, oh, what? You never did this in high school? I did it all the time! Right after I made the honor roll in Muggle Studies! Didn't you look at my plan? It's supposed to be this big compared to me! But it's okay, they have a shrinking ray to make him the scale they wanted. Um, hey, here's an idea. Instead of calling a news conference about a sea monster, um, why don't you call the news conference about a bunch of high schoolers that made a shrinking ray or a giant robot? Don't you think that should get some attention? Don't you think instead of just shrugging comedically, these kids should get a Nobel Prize for changing the world of science as we know it? What's wrong with you jelly bean colored Simpson rejects? People. But, I digress. Things, believe it or not, get even weirder as Roger's robot turns into a motherly housemaid. A sort of Julia Child bot, if you will. Now, let's change her out of that beastly outfit and into something more pre presentable. Okay, this idea could be salvageable if she gets in a bloody death match with Rosie from the Jetsons. I don't know how they fit in, but trust me, they couldn't make it any worse. So, because we're not done ripping off every G movie cliche known to cinema, we now get the bit where they disguise the creature as a person, and of course, everybody falls for it. What's her name? It's Herman Anunaini. Ah, what a beautiful name. Herman Anunaini. Hey, you know what? This is really stupid. Look at Doug with that cute girl. Wait a minute. What? Look at Doug with that cute girl. Okay, all right. I can believe the boys getting excited for the dance. I can believe the mayor not using her powers at all to prove an earth-shattering discovery. I can believe high schoolers can build a giant robot and a shrinking ray and have none of that get any media attention. But if you expect me to believe that any high school girl, high school girl, mind you, will look at this deformed demon, think he's a female student, and actually verbally acknowledge that she's cute? You are fired from breathing! Please, pack up your desk and kindly leave life! But I digress! Doug, I'm not gonna stand here and be lied to. I'm not blind, you know. I know who you're really spending your time with. That Hermione girl you've been hanging around with all day. I already made a Hogwarts joke, so I'll just let this one go. Come on, Patty, she's not even a girl. I know you think I must be dumb because I believed all that monster stuff before, but I hope you don't think I'm that gullible, Doug. Well, you think that is that? And really, Doug, you're trying to date this girl? So later that night, Bluff captures the creature and they take him away. Trying to think of something to do, Doug comes across the story that Guy is writing for the school paper. On the screen, next week's weekly BB. Monster destroyed. 
Bill Bluff a hero? We're too late. Herman's dead. Wait, you just said it was next week. Obviously he wrote it ahead of time before it happened. They killed Herman. This stinks. Yeah, but it's next week's paper. The horrible monster was blasted into smithereens, thus saving the dance organized by cool upperclassman Guy Graham. It's next week's paper! Night of fun turns into night of terror. Didn't you see tomorrow never dies? It's a James Bond scheme! Wake up! Wait, that's... The dance isn't until tonight. Of course! Guy wanted to make sure this was in next week's paper. You mean when I said it was next week's paper, it was actually next week's paper? Oh! Guy must have known I'd be stupid enough to do... whatever it is my brain just did there! So, the night of the dance comes, and nobody seems to question why security has been up to Nazi-level extremes. We're so glad to see so many of you lovely people here tonight. We would especially like to welcome all the representatives of Illinois' law enforcement community who have chosen to join us here in the Palace Hotel Ballroom at this time. We certainly hope you all enjoy the show. They managed to find the monster and dress up the fembot to go in posing as him. Fire. Whoa, pretty harsh on the robot there, aren't you guys? What the? Roger. Roger. So funny. Take this. Take him. No! Oh! I can't believe how needlessly cruel they're being to this thing. So they return the monster to the water, and Bluff has to explain himself. May I think? Bill, I think you should discuss your pollution problems with me. Oh, yes, of course. Certainly. Certainly. And just like most elected officials, they come into the problem too late, do absolutely nothing to solve it, and yet somehow they take all the credit when it finally works out. You elected them, folks! Patty? Are you okay, Patty? But the monster comes back one more time to say goodbye after the people have left. I forgot! I brought you something! Remember this? Herman Melville's works? Yes, he writes about a monster in the water who people try to hunt down and kill. But don't worry though, you'll enjoy the ending. So he goes back into the water and we get to see our favorite character one more time before the film ends. No, no, not that puke stain. Where are you? Oh, oh, you forgot your jacket! I feel so sorry for this thing! Roger! 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 How is it in a cast of characters this big and literally this colorful, the only one I feel any amount of emotion for is the lifeless robot? It's actually kind of hard to watch! Roger! 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 <laughs> Go give him his coat, robot! You have America on your side! Patty and I danced on the dock under the moon for quite some time. I wouldn't have minded if it had gone on forever. I'll just assume that's a fart we're ending on and call the film quits. So that was Doug's first movie. Aren't you so glad they brought that to the big screen? I mean, what was even the purpose? Nothing about it screamed cinema, so why did they even make it? As you probably guess, it suffers from the same problem that the show suffers from. It's bland and boring! I hate this movie! I hate this show! I hate everything having to do with it! And thank God this is the last thing I ever have to review having to deal with it! Because I swear, if I hear that song one more time, I don't know what's gonna happen! I'm the Nostalgia Craig, I remember it! <laughs>